Right, in this movie we're going to have a look at how Amnesty International Vlaanderen use the form processor extension and the CVMIC REST based or CMRF framework to link petitions from their public website into CVCRM which is on a different server. The petition form in its final shape will look something like this, which is in Dutch, so I'll translate because some people might not speak Dutch. So it's going to have a sign the petition and on there it's going to be first name, last name, birth date, email address and a little checkbox to say yes I would like to receive mails about actions like this. I've um, replaced this form because this is on the live website on my uh, local machine to something like this which of course doesn't look as nice but um, is roughly the same. I'm gonna pause the video for a sec to prepare for the next step. So basically what happens will look a little bit like this. On the one side I will have the public website with the CMRF framework installed. It will send data with an API request to Civi Proxy, a server with Civi Proxy installed. Civi Proxy will check if the API request is whitelisted, so if it's actually allowed, and if the credentials are correct. And if both are true, it will then send the API request on to Civi CRM. Uh, receive the data or if there is any data to be returned and will return that data back to the public website. So basically Civi Proxy determines what API request can go to Civi CRM. And in this way I can have a public website or web service communicate with Civi CRM even though Civi CRM is sitting on another server. So in this setup, um, uh, it is not the case, as in quite a few setups, that CVCRM is installed on the same server as your public website and is running on the same CMS. In theory, your public website could be in any CMS as long as it uses or can use the CMRF framework to communicate with CV Proxy or even code your own API request to go to CV Proxy. In this particular example, we actually have a public website with Drupal and CV CRM in the, on the server that CV CRM sits on is also running in an internal Drupal, Drupal installation. But I could easily have a public website with w WordPress whilst my Civi CRM still runs on my Civi CRM server in Drupal. So let's have a look at what I've got. I'm looking at the, if you like, public website end of things now in Drupal 7. And you can see in this tab that I have modules installed for the Civi MRF, Civi MIG REST phase uh, framework. I have the CMRF core installed. I have the Civi MRF web form integration, which integrates the Drupal web forms with Civi McRest phase. And I have the Civi McRest phase form processor web form integration, which makes it possible to link form processors in Civi CRM to the public website. Now that sounds a bit weird because I, for a form processor in Civi CRM, as we will see later, is just an API request. So I could do it in any way, but this module makes it a little easier and it shows me which form processors are available using the CMRF connection and it tells me which data elements I need to include. To set up, once I have this CMRF core set up, I will have an option in my configuration menu which will be CV McRest phase connection profiles. And in those profiles, I can set up a connection. 
So in this case, I'm going to say I have a remote connection to CV3, which is our CV0 and test server. It's not a local connection, it's a remote connection. So I'm using the REST, and the REST is on gate 3, which is the server where CV proxy is running. And obviously then I can set the site key and the API key, which need to be the site key and the API key that CV proxy uses, which could be different from the site key and the API key which CV CRM itself requires, which is stored on the proxy server. By setting up this connector, I can then communicate with CV CRM. Okay. So now, next step is we're going to make a move to uh, a CV CRM and see what we've got there. So I'm now looking at the extensions tab in CV CRM. Which in, uh, uh, extensions have I got installed? Well, I need the action provider, which is an underlying extension enabling using actions in the form processor. So that's the first one I will need on CVCRM to be able to use the form processor. And what I'm going to do in the form processor is describe the data that my form will have on the website. So the data I expect coming in from the website and what I'm going to do with that data. That is what I'm going to do in the form processor. And I also need the form processor extension which you can see here so i have the form processor extension installed and i need that one as well in this specific case where I, we're looking at the uh, amnesty processes i also have two specific extensions for amnesty installed which is the AIVL generic extension and the AIVL specific actions, which are form processor actions specific to CVCRM. Okay, so once I have this form processor installed, I will have an additional option in my administer menu, which is automation, and I can have a look at the form processes. And when I choose that option, I will get a list of form processors that I have installed. And you can see that I've got quite a few, but we're actually only going to look at the petition form this time. So I've got the petition form set up here. And if I select edit, you can see that I've given it a title. And from the title, CV's generated a name, which I can change if I want to. But obviously, I need to be careful when changing that. There's a description, so this processor is used for adding a petition signature activity to CV and managing the email preferences of the person who signs the petition, which in this example we're actually going to ignore. So in this example, what will happen is if someone signs a petition on the web form, on the website, uh, CV CRM will either find the contact or needs to find the contact or create a new contact and then add a petition activity to that contact with some specific data. And that petition needs to be added to a campaign because a petition in Amnesty setup is a campaign. In this section, in the input section, I'm specifying what data elements I will expect to receive from my form. So from this petition form, I expect to get a birth date, it's not required, but I could have a birth date, a campaign ID, which will be the ID of the campaign of the petition, as, as mentioned in Amnesty Setup, each petition is a campaign, the email address of the person who signs it, the first name, the last name, and whether there is more information checked. And then I also have a special uh, flag, which is called the petition flag, which I'm going to use. Um, in some cases, the uh, petition option will be available on other web forms as well. For example, if someone's donating for a specific cause, on the form there could also be a checkbox that says, please also sign the petition. And if that flag is ticked, then a petition activity is generated. So this 
form processor needs to be able to deal with the petition flag. In this case, we're signing a petition, so the flag will always be one, and the default value is one. So we don't need to send it from the, from the form. So this is what I'm specifying. This is the data I'm expecting to come in with my form. In the next section, I have actions where I can specify what I expect to do with my, out, with my form data. So the first thing I need to do is find or create a contact, which is an action that comes with the extended contact matcher extension, the XCMN ex extension. In that action, I can specify which XCM profile I expect to use. I'm not going into all the details of it, but basically XM, XCM allows you with data to either find a contact or create a new one and it will always return an ID. And in this case, I'm going to use the first name input, the last name input, which is data coming from my form, the birth date input, and the email input to either find a contact with that data or create a new one. Once that's happened, I then would like to add a petition activity to that found contact. This is a specific action for Amnesty, which has been developed specifically for Amnesty. And I have the possibility here to say, this is the activity type for my petition. This is the activity status. It's going to be complete because it has been signed. It also gives me the uh, ability to pick up a, a newsletter group because if someone tags the I want more information, I want to add them to a group. That's stuff that's configured. And then parameters, I have a campaign ID coming from my form. I have a contact ID, which is the result of my previous action. I have the petition flag input and have the more information input. So what's happening now is I've coded, I've done some development to uh, create this specific action, but once it's there, I can use that action without any coding. And as you can see, there are quite a few actions standard within the action provider extension, like I can delete an activity, I can create or update an activity, I can get an activity with an ID, I can get contact ID from an activity, etc., 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 etc. Okay, so what I've done now basically is I've within CVCRM I've said there could be a form on the website or a request coming in from somewhere with this data set, and when it does, I know what to do with it. It has created an API request, and the API request is called Form Processor Petition Form. So basically, what's gonna happen is the website is gonna send the API request Form Processor Petition Form to CV Proxy, which will then forward it to CVCRAM. And as you can probably understand, this is possible from any web service coming from outside. Anywhere where you can send an API request to CVCRM, you can use this. And I can use the standard CVCRM API Explorer, which is under the Support Developer API Explorer option, to test the form. So I could say, I want to test the form processor petition form. I can see that when I add parameters, I have all the parameters I've specified in my um, form processor. So I'm going to say petition flag is one. Birth date is going to be that form and then I'm going to have a campaign which is going to be just checking what test campaigns I have in here. I'm going to have 1529. I'm going to have a first name which is 
John, I am going to have a last name, which is Joe. I'm going to have an email, which says John Doe at example.org. And I'm going to have more information, yes. And I'm going to execute this request. And it will now call the form processor and do whatever it needs to do. So it says I've had these inputs, I've had an action find or create contact, which gave me the contact ID 386775. And I had the add petition activity, which has created this activity. And if I would now go to, I can see that I have a, a John Doe with this email address, which is the one I've just created with the information I've added and I can see that I have an activity activity signs linked to that specific test campaign. So in CVCRM without even looking at the website I can see that if I receive this data then it's processed correctly. I'll now pause the video and we'll have a look at the form. So we've seen how this stuff works on the CVCRM site. Let's now have a look at the website part of the puzzle. So as explained, I have set up this form, which is a Drupal 7 web form. And if I go to web form, I can see the stuff that I normally see if you have ever used web forms in Drupal 7. There's a section where I can sit up, set up my components of my form. But I also have an additional tab here, which is called CVMRF. And if I click on that, I can see that I have the possibility to submit this form with CVMRF. And I have the option to submit to the CVCRM API, which I'm going to get if I install the CMRF framework and the CV, uh, CVMRF web form integration. But I also have the specific option to submit to the CVCRM form processor, which I have if I also installed the CVMRF form processor module. You can probably understand that as the form processor request is also the API, I could use this one. But if I use this one, I have the additional benefit that I can see the form processors that my CVCRM to which I'm linking has. And I'm linking by selecting the connection profile, which we've seen at the beginning of the movie that we set up a connection to a test CVCRM server. And if I use that connection, I'm going to get the form processors which are there. And I then have specified that this is what's going to happen. Once I submit the form, it's going to send a form processor request. Here you can see that I have the components which I specified also on the form processor and I'm using the, the same name. So even though here I have a forenum in Dutch, the form key is first name because that's what my form processor expects. And the same for last name, email and birth date and the more information flag. You can see that I have two hidden elements. I have the petition flag, which is always one for this form. And I have the campaign ID, which is the campaign ID of the petition I'm setting up the form for. So if I now sign this form, mini mouse, and the email address mini mouse at example.org, and I'll select the birth date. And I would like more information. So I'm on the public website and if I now click submit, it's obviously going to submit the form just on the public website, but it's also going to send a form processor request to CV proxy, which will then forward it to CV CRM. So my stuff is going to end up there. So if I go to CV and I look for mouse, I can see that I now have mini mouse. So in this way, I've connected the public website on server A to CVCRM sitting on server B. That's what I wanted to show you. I hope I've not forgotten anything. 
And please do not hesitate. This movie is going to be used on FOSDEM 2021, which is going to be a digital event. Don't hesitate to ask any questions on this specific subject um, uh, during my attendance hours at the CVCRM stand. Thank you for your attention.